on the Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posting notices in the Hall, Runnemede Post Office, Mary Bolt School, Align Banking School, Grace Downing School, and the Runnemede Public School District website. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call board members. Ms. Derrick. Yeah, here. Uh, Mr. Buckley. Here. Ms. Davidson. Here. Mr. Lego. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. Ms. Panzarella. Here. Ms. Sims. Ms. Spaulding. Here. And Ms. Beebe is not here. Working late. Yep. Also present are Guy Nucci, superintendent of the school, Dr. Sean McCarran, business administrator and director of curriculum instruction, and the rest of our administrative team was asked to please stay home. At this time, I need a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes at February 18th, to, uh, 2020. I'll make no. that motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. Motion made by Dennis, second by Maria. Sorry, I heard her first. Roll call. Mrs. Derek? Yes. Ms. Bu Mr. Buckland? Uh, abstain. I was not here. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Balding? Yes. Okay, this evening I'm presenting the 2021 budget. I, you guys had this information, so that way if you did have questions, we would be ready for the questions for the Senate, for tonight's meeting. Um, after I present this budget tonight, if and when it is approved, it will be submitted to the Department of Education County Office, so that way they can approve it, make sure that any necessary changes are made if needed. It will then be represented in April, where we do our public hearing on the budget, and we move on from there. Okay, so without further ado. Okay, so for this, um, our budget development and timeline. As a board, you guys approve the development and timeline usually in December or January of each year. Um, we actually start the budget process the October prior to, um, so as soon as the school year begins, we're already thinking about the next school year in terms of what planning needs to take place and what we're gonna be doing. So in October, we begin having those meetings. By January, our department heads, which would be Frank and Gladys, along with our principals, submit budget recommendations to myself and Mark. Um, in February, we then develop the budget that we plan to present to the board, and that's based on community input, needs within the district, things that might be coming up. Um, March is our tentative budget presentation with the board, and then in April, we do our public hearing. Things that we take into consideration would be school and district educational goals. Um, looking at our educational programs. What programs do we need moving forward? What programs are we updating? Are any changes required based on state or federal statutes? Community support and feedback, what we're hearing. Um, looking at our enrollment, and as a district, we've been extremely consistent with our enrollment um, over the past number of years. Um, looking at our anticipated revenue, money that's coming into the district. Looking at mandated regulations based on both state and federal. Unfortunately, many of the regulations that we're told we have to implement don't always have funding attached to them, which means that we then are responsible for finding that funding and making sure that whatever is required takes place. And then, of course, any upcoming costs or needs that we see moving forward. Looking at revenues, money coming in. Um, so just so everyone understands, half of our money comes from our local tax levy, just about half. Um, so that's our taxpayer dollars for, for those businesses and members in the community that they pay towards their school tax. There's actually two taxes that are paid in front of me, local school tax and then also the regional school tax. So it's a different percentage for each. Um, as you can see over the course of the years, um, as long as we stay below 2%, there's no need for a public hearing or a public vote on the budget. This year, um, we're actually only doing a 1% increase in the tax levy as opposed to other years where we did a 2%. Um, we did receive additional state aid money, but as you know, that money that we received is based on lack of funding in years prior. So while we're, and we are also doing a number of projects this year, such as replacement of the gym floor, um, and that's gonna deplete a lot of our reserve accounts that we have, and the reason for us wanting to build those up is that us being able to maintain our facilities the way that we have been is because of those reserve accounts, and because we've been making good choices with the money that we do have so we don't find ourselves in a position where our schools aren't being maintained or upkept. 
Um, so this year, the amount for local tax levy is seven million five hundred forty-one thousand one hundred and twenty-one dollars. The increase from the prior year is seventy-four thousand six hundred and sixty-five dollar difference. Um, total revenue, the total amount of money when you take into consideration state and federal funding, and this will actually change slightly once the official federal numbers are released. We always estimate that there's going to be a reduction each year by about 10 to 15 percent. So that might actually increase a little bit when everything is said and done. So our total budget is $16,933,825. That also reflects, if you look at that huge jump, um, that's a reflection also of our preschool funding that we received. Because we went from having two half-day programs to having, next year we'll have seven full-day programs across the district that are funded by um, the state and federal funds. Looking at the local tax levy, um, in 2021 the tax rate for 20, the 2021 budget is 1.517 and the average home in Runnymede is valued at $147,985. So that's all taken from tax records as far as how things are calculated out. School taxes for an average home would be $2,244.93 a year. When you base that on the property valuation of $100,000, um, looking from one year to the next, the school tax increase would be $16.10 based on the valuation. Any questions? Summary of what's in the budget. Of course, we're maintaining all of our current services and initiatives that we currently have in place. And we've done a lot over the years to make sure that we have a, those items in place to support our students and staff. Um, of course, we are right now, we're very fortunate with the position that we're in, that we have the amount of technology that we have in the district. You do not have Chromebooks in front of you this morning because they've all been pushed out to students throughout the district to take home with them. Um, across grades first through um, actually all second through eighth and then also a number of first graders as well have taken devices home on top of that so of course updating technology throughout all grade levels updates to school facilities we will have an additional pre-k classroom that means that it has to be outfitted for pre-k regulations we are removing and replacing the Vols gymnasium floor which had um, mercury base on the bottom of it while it was below the health department guidelines we want to make sure that it's removed before it becomes worse or before there's any other issues. So that will be a, a very large summer project. On top of that, we have security updates taking place um, over spring break. We will be adding a vestibule, which was part of the thing, so that way it'll be a double entry at Vols, just like we have a double entry at Bingham and Downing currently. In addition to that, there's always HVAC upgrades and flooring projects that are taking place. We still have a few floors within the district that need to have carpeting removed from classrooms and tile put down. Many of those floors though are also asbestos bottoms, which mean that when we do those floors, they have to be abated, which can take about three to five days for that, that abatement process before we can actually put anything down. Um, and then of course, maintain and support all the advancements that we've done, both educational, extracurricular, food service, transportation, before and after care, and summer programming. Um, Food service is 100% self-funding, meaning the borough, our, um, our budget contributes nothing to food service. Um, while we're not bringing money back into the budget at this point in time, we are 100% covered and we're very well balanced. Transportation, we've saved a ton of money over the years by having our large bus and small bus to transport both athletics and doing our daily runs. And that's been a positive impact on our budget. And then on top of that, in this budget, we're actually pulling $75,000 out of our before and after care fund to put into our budget. So that's helping us fund additional programs and things within our schools based on the money that we've made off of before and after care. On top of that, we have not raised pricing for before and after care across the board. In addition, we've also added um, the voucher system for students in grades K to 8. So if parents have a voucher um, for child care, they're able to actually use it with our program and then the state reimburses us for money for that. So we've been able to provide a lot for our community in regards to um, services. Mm -hmm. Finally, I bring this up every year, I always highlight the things that we're doing. So while we've done a lot over the past number of years, we have to maintain all those things. So it's just because they're not highlighted doesn't mean that they don't need work or growth or improvement. Things that I highlighted are things that we're adding for this upcoming year. One thing that we've added that we will continue to maintain is our RBT8s, which support our special education students within our district. 
In 2021, we're adding additional pre-K teacher and aides to the building because we're going to have that additional classroom. We are continuing with our preschool expansion. That never goes away. Um, so we just have to continue writing the grant, implementing the programs, putting in the mandates that they have on their level. Um, this year for maintenance and facilities, pre-K classrooms, security upgrades, Vols gymnasium floor. And then for technology, it's actually over 800 one-to-one -one devices that we have that we need to maintain. Um, we just sent home over 400 devices that no longer have their insurance policy that were always in district. However, you know, extreme times call for extreme measures. And if we want to make sure our students have technology at home, then we're going to send it. Um, but that being said, that was a big, you know, anxiety thing for me because I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. We're sending all these devices home, but everything will be fine. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know so that way I can get you answers. Just one quick sure. The preschool, um, so you're, am I hearing you correctly that each year it has to be re granted to us? So we're not going to lose our funding for the classrooms that we currently have. Okay. Each year, though, we have to fill out the grant application okay. explaining how we're meeting all the mandates within the preschool grant okay. and how we're addressing the PERC team and how we're addressing professional development and how we're addressing all of those needs. Okay. Um, so each year we do have to resubmit to the Department of Education, but we do that for our Title I, for our Title II. So it's just another it's just another application that we okay. get to fill out. So okay. you know. Thank you. Yeah. Quick question for you on the floor. From the time all this nonsense started on the floor to the time you take it out, are we seeing because you had mentioned about you want to get it taken out prior to anything getting worse. Are we monitoring for the time now until we take it out to see if it's increased? Correct. And the state as of right now has not put out any further guidance, but they are starting to get on top of districts in terms of monitoring what they're doing. Um, with everything that's taking place currently in the state of the Department of Education, I don't really see them giving further guidance. So we're going to continue with our path that we've done. Everyone who we've selected to remove things are either state contract or vetted in regards to having experience with those areas. So the numbers you have on that floor, the numbers they're that they're having towards removed. We already have our quote. Everything's already and in line. The numbers as far as anything. Well, the mercury the level. Yeah. Yeah. If we have to retest, they will be out again. Okay. They'll be and they'll retest through that entire process. But are they going to retest prior to taking that? So I'm yes. saying, say from December till yes. take it out in June. They've been, they've come out. Time? They come out. Yeah, whatever the requirement okay. is. To I don't know that it will increase, but. And also during that process, while the floor is being removed and everything, they'll be out on a daily basis to monitor the process and take levels throughout. So that's a part of that removal. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Absolutely. At this time, uh, we're open for public comment on agenda items only. Do you have any comments on the agenda items? If not, then we will move forward to Ms. Brian Ritchie, Superintendent of I'm just going to give a quick update on what we've been doing, obviously, um, with the news of COVID-19, everything we've done as a district. Uh, I'll try to do a quick summary. I have been trying to keep you up to date with things I've been saying it through emails. Um, if you have any problems for reading some of that stuff, let me know. I know sometimes the links I link on there. Don't let me share them properly or something like that. So if nobody's reached out to me, so I assume you can't look at them. Um, last week, we did meet as a district team. Um, to develop a site, which you'll see now. It's the main link on our website. I believe it's, it says uh, remote, learning. Learning. Yeah, remote learning. Yeah, remote learning. The teachers and the administrative staff did a great job of putting that together. Um, now keep in mind that colleges who promote online learning for the last several years, it takes years to develop those programs. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be things that people might say, oh, this isn't doing, this isn't working. This is, but you know, we threw this together in about a week. Um, so in that Week period of time, I think they did a great job. Um, the feedback I was in the office I take a phone call. None of the complaints were about the work. It might be, oh, my son left this Chromebook in his locker, kind of come pick it up, and we kind of did that. Or we left their folder, and so we kind of handled those things. So we're working out glitches. Um, Mr. Penor has done a great job on his tech end, um, working hard to get those things clarified. Right now, as far as device wise, um, everything's up and running. Students obviously in the lower grades were sent home with pencil and paper activities or recommendations through their uh, Google Classroom. I was in the kindergarten Google Classroom today. You know, the activities she has set up for them are, are awesome. So take a look at that. Uh, see what the little guys know as well. Um, special education services right now, obviously, 
Um, some of those aren't being delivered because the students aren't in the school. So if the student needed speech or they need OTPT, um, we're looking at giving compensatory services once the students return. Um, very little guidance from the state regarding how that's going to happen. Um, we're going to do the best we can. That's basically what they're telling us. When the kids come back, it's double up sessions. If it's figuring something out, we'll do the best we can. Parents have been under, understanding of that. Obviously, this is a, when all the code and stuff was written years ago, the word pandemic was never something I don't think anybody thought of as preventing a kid from getting speech services. So we're doing the best we can in those areas. Um, Frank and his crew, um, we did purchase that electric status sprayer back in the fall during the cold and flu season. Um, Custodial crews have been cleaning before that is used. Um, you're doing deep cleans, all the desks, any kind of high touch areas, keyboards, desks, chairs, things like that. Um, they wipe them down, then Frank goes in, or whoever might be in charge at night, and they spray it. It has to sit for about 10 minutes, I believe. It doesn't have to be wiped off, um, but that, that's been great. And we also ordered two backpack sprayers for handheld sprayers for um, to hit all three of the buildings more consistently. So that's been great. Um, that's also basically uh, if you have any questions you've heard, you can share them with me. Uh, I do appreciate, appreciate your support, some of the decisions we were making were kind of on the whim. Um, sorry for bothering you on Friday night and Saturday morning so much. I was just kind of keep you updated. Um, again, we use that term fluid. The situation is fluid. It could change overnight. So I appreciate your patience. I just want to thank you guys for what you're doing. This, everything I say is it's unbelievable. I mean, for something that you don't even have a roadmap for. So. Kudos. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a team effort. It's just not yeah. one person, so we do appreciate everybody out there. We will make sure that we pass all that. Do you think there'd be any cutoff? I may say I've heard from the state. Just say, for whatever reason, this clears up by middle of May or something. Do you think they would run anything beyond the summer? Or what do you think they would I, I don't think that would happen. Yeah. We're covered. Yeah. Especially right now, it's, 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 it's for the 180 days, yeah. as you all know, remote learning activities. So I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's covered as a, uh, um, I guess, a state policy or law that for situations like this, we would not have to make up these things. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And I have to tell you that, like, from like taking my board member hat off and my teacher hat off, like, as a parent, my, I mean, my son was working today. Mm -hmm. My son worked for multiple hours. Like, he went through his, he went through a schedule. Like he had a schedule in front of him, and he's like, okay, well, I start off in, EL, in, la, in language arts every day, so let me do my, la, my language arts. And, and then he had a question for his, his history teacher. He emailed his history teacher. I mean, he's in sixth grade. He's not in kindergarten. But, I mean, I don't want to, like, say this out loud, but, like, this will work. It'll, it'll work for right now. We just need to say. As, as a parent, just to ask you, what, what, what is he saying about what's happening? I was asking Sean, like, what are the he's kids um, saying, like, he is not as concerned. He's not as concerned. Although he comprehends, he's he's not as concerned. So after he was done and I had made some soup and I gave him his soup, I made him go shoot some hoops for an hour and ride his bike alone. Yeah. Right? Just because I told him it's, uh, it was his, his physical education class. He said it's Tuesday. I don't have physical education on Tuesday. I said, well, you do today. Huh. Um, but I just, like, he's just, I don't, I don't think he... I don't I, like. I'm not I'm not letting him watch the news. Yeah. Now that might sound silly, but I just don't want him to, to worry. But so I mean, he just is like, this is what we have to do. And he was prepared. He came home. He was he was prepared Friday. He came home ready, like he knew what he had to do. So our dining room table looks like I have half of it for my desk. So I'm doing the same thing as an educator. I'm at, I'm yeah. I'm there for my students, and he's there for them. And he set an alarm today and was ready to go earlier than he would have had to come to school. So, I mean, I just think that uh, some people are, like, I think some of the older kids, like college kids are really upset. Uh, and, and high school, I teach high school, so high school kids are, like, super, super upset with sports and different things like that being canceled. But, I mean, there's just nothing we can do at this point. So, Dennis, I have a four-year-old who I told school was good for because, because there were a couple of days where I didn't want to go to school. I said, school's good for you. It's a schedule. and. You get to see your friends. Yeah. So when we left here on Monday, and it was a very somber preschool pickup on Monday, um, things weren't the same. We got in the car. I said, that's it, buddy. You're out of school for a while. You have a virus vacation. And he said, viruses aren't good for you, and school is. So I'm done. Yeah. I can't explain it any longer. You know, it's hard.
it's hard to process, I think, for any of us. But as a district, oh, we are. as a district, we were, we were ready. Oh, like, sure. I'm, I'm extremely confident. I don't necessarily know that the parents were Words. ready to yeah. no. to facilitate everything, but not. we were, we were, like, we were ready. That's why I said, you do whatever you want to do. We were ready. I knew we were ready. We were ready last week. They were meetings last week. They were keeping me informed. I had checks Friday morning delivered to my job. Like, things were signed. Like, we were ready to go. And other parents have talked to me throughout the day. How wonderful. It mm -hmm. was all set up. Yeah. The preschool teachers, I don't know if yours did, but my son's preschool teacher this morning, like the messages went on. Oh, the, it, oh, was, it, it was like absolute, and she said she was collaborating with all of the preschool teachers. Something else that was cool too, like there was like, I mean, like for you to like imagine this, like my son's science teacher was like, he clicked on a link and it was a video, and she's like, take out your notes, and it was like her voice. Right? He takes out his binder and his notes and she's going over the notes and, and he's filling in the notes and he's looking at her. Right. And it's her teaching teaching him it's just that she created the video, you know, and sent the link. So I mean they are they are learning. I mean nothing beats coming to school every day and, yeah. and, and even the students will say that, but, but they are they are learning. Any, uh, Dr. McCarran, do you have anything else for us? Okay, as everyone said, we can't say enough about our teachers and staff members as far as everything they've done, the videos, the interaction. Um, they've really embraced this as well as possible to make it a good environment for everyone involved. Um, food service, I can't say enough about everyone within our food service team and community willing to help and um, promote the food service program. Any student that receives free and reduced lunch will continue to receive free and reduced lunch while we are out um, of school. It will be every Wednesday at Vols between the hours of 11 and 1. If the time doesn't work, we will set up a time to make sure that the food is given to them. Um, messages have gone out for a survey just so parents knew where to go and also to see if they had any questions. A big thing that we've been doing during this entire time, whether it be Facebook, whether it be surveys, every time a parent makes a comment that seems they're confused or don't understand, we're calling them directly. Um, because I feel like in this type of situation, the worst thing that could happen is for someone to feel like they don't understand or they don't know what to do. And that can totally get blown out of proportion on social media, which is the last thing I want. So of course, you know, I'm always checking Concerned Citizens of Runnymede. I'm checking my Runnymede Facebook page to see what people are saying. So that way, if someone does have a concern, we're calling them immediately for that. In the, um, I tried to call a parent from every grade level today just to check in and see how things were going at that grade level. Most of the parents had extremely positive things to say. There were a few hiccups for some in terms of vlogging online this morning with slow internet speeds. However, I joke saying that every student in the state of New Jersey was trying to log on at 8 a.m. this morning for their virtual learning. Um, but other than that, everything was good. Food service, we are continuing to track. We're also going to be putting something out tonight for all of our families who are 100% paid, letting them know that if for any reason their financial situation has changed, showing them what the income levels are because we can automatically add them to free and reduce by them filling out one simple application. So that way if someone lost their hourly job or someone lost their, you know, a job at a location that had to shut down for a time being, we want to make sure that they are provided with whatever services we can provide with at that time. Um, in addition to that, any food that we have left because there are things that are perishable or will go within a week, we're trying to find different places. I know the Ransom House was recommended as a place. I'll be contacting them. I know that there's other food food pantries or kitchens that we will try to make sure that whatever food we do have left goes to um, during this time and situation. Um, other than that, I mean, we're, I'm still you know working with Benora on testing prep just because for all we know, we can come back in two to three weeks and they're gonna say you still have to do state testing because it's federal regulations and you don't have a choice. So we kind of have to make sure that regardless of us being out for two weeks or eight weeks or beyond, that we're ready to go 100% with whatever is decided moving forward. So, you know, it's just one day at a time and trying to make the best of a really bad situation. So, I think everyone's kind of, you know, sticking true to that. So, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. The district reports are also attached. Um, and so, does anyone have any questions on them? I know that they're not here, but if you do, please reach out to um, any of the principals or anything that special education, if you had any questions, just uh, let
let uh, Mark know, and I'm sure he'll get that answer for you immediately. Um, as far as committee reports, do we have? Do we want to do an update? Uh, like, real quick, uh, with the Kent County Educational Service Commission, uh, I just want to say when they had their uh, school mental health summit uh, on February the 28th, there were 185 people in attendance. Ron Meade was represented by our superintendent and I think Gladys. I had child study team and and uh, the superintendent just wanted me to mention at this being that they're going to plan another summit uh, down the road because it was such a success. And the other thing I'll just touch on real quickly is, uh, I guess it'll be out next month because of the short meeting. Uh, Dan DeVecchio was going to come here tonight to talk about eSports. Uh, I didn't realize how big this has grown. More than 10% of all the children in middle school and high school are participating in eSports activities. Over 100 colleges and universities are now offering full athletic scholarships for eSports teams. Uh, Comcast right now is building in Philadelphia down the sports complex a 3,500-seat eSports stadium for people to come and watch. And right now, uh, a private firm along with Rowan University and Eastern High School are working to purchase um, I don't know if it's the Macy's store, it might be the Macy's store, one of the large stores that closed down at the mall to, to build an eSports center, which would also offer Rowan University college courses, not just in doing eSports, but any, any major you have. It's a growing, a growing activity, and Dan is in the forefront and wants to set it up so that we can begin, hopefully, in the 2021 school year, uh, offer esports as a competitive sport. And one of the things about esports, it opens up the door for a lot of kids that aren't involved in the athletic programs we have. Mm -hmm. He said that the, the national statistic is at high school level, only 18 to 20 percent of all high school kids ever participate in a single sport while they're in high school. So that means 80 percent of the kids aren't. You know, some of them are in music and uh, drama, which is great, and in clubs. But this is another avenue. So he's going to be coming up hopefully next month yeah, to our meeting and do us. He has a about ten minute slide presentation. It's phenomenal. So that's what's going on with the King County Education Service Commission. I did miss last month's uh, board meeting. I won't be missing anymore because uh, we have three subcommittees and I am now chairperson on the one subcommittee. So I will be scheduling what we meet, and it won't be on our board meeting dates. But, but simply what has happened is uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, they started a mental health task force who came out with a report, and they only read it. I'm not going through it. Maybe some of you have read it as well. And uh, they have put together three committees, subcommittees, that are going to take apart these uh, ideas and recommendations. And one is called the proactive preventions. It's what can we do as a school system to prevent children from uh, anxiety, depression, suicide ideas, getting on drugs, whatever else. That's one committee. Uh, so the second committee is intervention. Once something has happened while it's going on, how can we be supportive to help that child through this situation? And the third is a postvention. Was what can we do after something has happened tragically? to give that child the kind of support they need socially and emotionally so they can get back on track and become productive and, and get through their crisis and become a, a, a normal person again as, and a good citizen. So uh, I'm on subcommittee three. Uh, what can we do afterwards? And we, what we're doing is we're taking apart the entire report and breaking it down into different categories like health service, nutrition, uh, physical education, quality, curriculum, every aspect of a public school and the things that they do. And this is going to be an ongoing committee. I mean, I think I'm the oldest with all the sports, so someday I'm going to be pushing up daisies. This committee is going to keep going. It's never going to end. The people on the committee may change, but this is going to be something that the Virginia School Board wants to just keep it going forever and always making adjustments for you know the new situations young people are confronted with in school and out of school. So that's the report on that committee. That committee might be very right. We were supposed to meet on the 19th, two days from today, but every meeting through New Jersey yes. has been canceled through April 30th. So we will not be meeting again until the month of May. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have anything or can we move forward?
I just real quick, I went to the borough meeting. Um, Matt Willow was recognized um, by the um, Camden County Hero Scholarship Fund. Huge reading was done. Truly an asset to our community. I think we we all know this. And the second thing is, I went up and um, questioned um, the mayor and council regarding our extremely compromised parking situation here and um, I told them it may not be the first time they've heard of this um, problem but it definitely won't be the last and the mayor actually conferred with um, Ms. Pinto that there in fact can't be an ordinance located that states there can't be um, parking and he advised me to reach out to um, our school administration team to forward a letter so I immediately the next morning that's when I I called Mr. Iannucci and he was actually on his way to another building and the letter was done I think before like you could say boo when he got back to his office um, so we await as he does um, word on that but it would open up parking um, where the yellow curve is all the way down in front of the soccer field and for many of you that do not come um, to Bolts during a school day it is beyond difficult for some of our staff to find a parking spot anywhere on the school grounds let alone within a multi-block radius there's um, a number of uh, our staff Mr. Bernard being one of them you know as with many others that are required to leave and they often come back to absolutely no parking on the you know grounds at all they're parking blocks away with the new preschool um, expansion I can count probably 20 new employees over the last year between teachers and aides and then we have another classroom coming in so again that's a one-way street um, as you know many of the streets in front of me you can't fit two you know cars going both ways anyway it would truly alleviate a lot of the problems here in terms of parking so we await that that's it thank you all right new business property transportation I need a motion to approve items numbers one and two I make that motion second Motion made by Chaz, seconded by Naomi. Any questions? Roll call. Mr. Derek? Yes. Mr. Machan? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Benzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. Under personnel, I need a motion to approve items numbers one through five. I'll make a motion to approve one through five. I'll second. Motion made by Dennis, seconded by Patty. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Derek? Yes. Mr. Buchan? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. Motion passes. Under finance, I need a motion to approve items numbers 1 through 11. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Chaz. Seconded by Maria. Questions? Any questions? I was just going to let them know, Dr. McCarron, if you would relax for 37 seconds, that numbers 9 and 10 were added on. Are we approving like, some of these things knowing it's yes. They may not, yep. Yes. yes. So yep. we're going to still course. do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. yep. It's the hopeful approach. Right. If there's no uh, questions, then we'll have a roll call. Mr. Derek? Yes. Mr. Ruffin? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. Motion passes. On your curriculum, I need a motion to approve items numbers one through five. I'll make a motion to approve items one through five on your curriculum. I'll motion second. by Maria, seconded by Patty. Roll call. Ms. Dare? Yes. Mr. Buckland? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Baldwin. Yes. Policy and public relations. Uh, motion for numbers one through three. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Maria. Oh, this one through three. Second. Seconded by Naomi. Roll call. Mrs. Dare? Yes. Mr. Brockheim? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Yes. At this time we're open for uh, any comments or concerns? Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Hello everybody. <laughs> Eleanor Kelly, 161 Forest Avenue. Um, yes, we are going to be dealing with that curbing issue at caucus. 
we have not been able to find any coordinates to that effect. Yep. So I checked with the fire department, and they don't know why right. that is yeah. occurring there. The police department had no clue. Nope. If I, uh, I don't see any reason why we can't eliminate that yellow curb. I don't see. I recall when we were making that, not to cut you off, when we were making that year, some years ago, when we decided to make that as a team, you know, to a one-way street. I believe the state had come down and said that they wanted that to be yellow. I, I, if I recall correctly, that's what I. That's what I. So remember. the state wanted it to be yellow. Yeah. That's what I recall. I don't know who or what. That's what I was told. As a and you're not aware of anything. That was back well, over there. Everything, I, everything, out everything to I was told about again about that memory. You know, and the only thing, or the only reason why I could think it would be yellow is when it was two way. So right. You know, that that maybe when that it was one way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, since one way, you don't yeah. need it to be yellow. You don't need right. it. Nope. You do not. The chief is of the same opinion. Yes. Being mm -hmm. that it is one way, he feels that it's, there's not a problem putting in and taking out the, the yellow curbing. So that's going to be discussed at caucus. Thank you. So I, Guys, I just question. want you to know it. If it's okay, if it's, if it's okay to park there, would they be painting in lines that would block it? You know how you do it for cars? Yeah, or would no. you just leave it just open? Just, yeah, open. It just, just open. open. Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> when school is not in session, people it can park to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You still park lines. Yeah. 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 Uh, it'll be perfectly. Yeah, but you know what, Chaz? There's not lines painted on the other <laughs> sheets, and people pretty much adhere to the, you know, pull up or you okay. know, parking fairly. I have to be honest with you. One thing I would suggest as director. On school days, I would have it posted, parking for teachers only. Yeah, we already started. Right. Yep. yep, yep, yep. On school days. So that that would be one of the decisions we'll make a call. Just replace the signs that um, are currently there. And say, nope. We're adding a new preschool classroom. Yep. Now, how many does that, how many kids will be coming next year with the new classroom? It's actually not additional students because our current pre-K-3 classroom is still half day. So there's two classes of 15. So what we, we had to do in order for us to keep funding for all of our rooms, right. we had to move 100% full day. Okay. So instead of having two half day classes in one room, we're now creating one new room and splitting that up so it's two full day classrooms. So to answer her question, how many three year olds can we house next 105 year? 105 total. Well, that's three year olds? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Oh. So between three and four year olds in the preschool, which is very good for our community, by the way. People will really want to buy a house because it's they free. They do already. Yeah. And that is one of the reasons our builders don't have any absolutely. real estate here. 105 students will be able to house between the three-year-old three and, and the four-year-old four program. Full day. For yes. free. Full day. Eleanor, I spoke to a parent who has two children, had two children, one in the three-year-old, one in the four-year-old. And he said that it was saving his family almost eleven thousand oh, dollars yeah. a year. No, people are moving here children. because of the. Yeah, yes. they, I've even heard that from the realtor. <laughs> okay. Uh, Since the existence. So of the tax prepared. next year reflected in the homeowners is going to be sixteen dollars and ten cents a year. I'll be taking that back. And you're raising one. You're doing one percent this year. Correct. All right. So we still don't have the regional, do we? No, no, not that, I'm, not that I'm aware of. I haven't heard anything on that end either. Okay. How many children are getting on a coming Wednesday for their food? Is it a lot? Is it a few? I think we Is have it responses. We have fifty something responses. Fifty every Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. And who's well, hand, who's handling that? Our food service department, um, Ruby Jewel. Uh, is coordinating that and if you look in the cafe you walk by all the tables are lined up and then we have some ladies coming in who work in our kitchens tomorrow morning and they will be boxing things up to give to the kids. Okay. Officer Brooks will be here to assist with any type of crowd. Uh, it'll, yeah. be a it'll be a grab and go. We don't want people Yeah, we don't want people in the building. Here won't be, nobody will come inside the building. They're just basically will put it in their car or you know, we'll leave it next to their car. Or so whatever. you have enough people to handle it? Yes. Yep. Because I, I could send over Officer Brooks, I could send over Brooks, one of our Brooks will be here to help us out. I talked to him already. Just help us out with, in case there's an issue, I don't think I know, we have an I issue. Know. With and that's what I'm like in Yep, no, we have that under control. Oh, we have plenty of staff. Thank you. Everybody else is cool? 
Yeah. Yeah. Anything else I can do here? Just, just back to the curb, Mrs. Kelly. We, we can't legally enforce it if it says teacher parking only. The only way to handle that would be to make a permit parking and only issue the permits to teachers. Oh. So, wow, that's a good thought. If you put teacher parking only, it doesn't mean anything to anybody. A resident could park there yeah. all day long. But, but if we make a no, permit yeah. like we have out by Triton that and only issue the permits to the side teachers would be the best way to handle it. Something to think about. Okay. I'll, I will talk about that in corporate. Okay. So. And what is the uh, process for the permit? It's, a, it's an ordinance. It's a borough ordinance for the permit. And, then and that's already in place. We we do it out by Triton, yep. all like your Carlisle, Schubert, and that's we, all permanent. Yeah, that ordinance we cover. I think you could probably add streets to the same ordinance. Mm -hmm. So you could add this 100 block of Third Avenue to that ordinance, I would think. We'll I'll, that. I'll come to the caucus meeting with you. And, and bring that ordinance so we can we'll have do. it. So Dan, will have, Dan can change it. Okay. Because he'll have to change it and then we'll have to publish. You know, yes, sure. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for being here. Our next uh, board meeting as is scheduled for April 20, 28th, 2020 here. It's our public budget hearing. We will be listening to um, recommendations from the state. Um, Did you say April 28th? April 28th. Okay, usually the third Tuesday. Yeah. It was, it was we had to slide it back. Up. Okay. So we had to slide it back, yeah. For the public hearing. For the public yeah. hearing, yeah, because the dates didn't match up. The, okay. state, the dates here. from the states that match yeah, up here. to what we originally and will be planned. Here, if we're allowed to be, if not, we'll be doing it virtually. We'll do something new where we'll be doing it virtually. Where what do you do, Zoom? Zoom? We can do either a YouTube channel or we can do our Facebook Live. Um, where any opportunity where the community have the opportunity to ask um, questions. I'm, I'm sure you guys will let us know. Uh, well, everyone will know by Friday, so that way we could always meet the 48 hour requirement. So, okay. we'll, you would know by Friday. Friday. That might be a night for our focus. I'll have to look on my schedule, but you we had to change it because the state the gives us a, yeah. only like a week like that we can Two actually do our budget. public budget hearing. That's what Well, who knows by April 28th what's Yes, happen. you're correct. Yeah. Um, I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Motion made by Patty, seconded by Naomi. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it.